There are many playstyles and locations where a solo Rust player can survive on high population servers. This video will teach you how to survive in the Arctic region that the in the map is painted in white. The main pros of living in this part of the map are abundance in wood, stone, metal and sulfur to farm, allowing you to easily build large bases, craft a lot of weapons and ammo. You won't find a lot of people living here, meaning that farming will be safer and the monuments will be less contested, allowing you to research everything you want fast. Personally, it took me 4 days from wipe day to lock every single blueprint living here. If you will be killed, often will be by the hands of a full geared clan member that don't even bother to loot you if you will go around naked. By using key locks instead of code locks on your doors uh, will tell anyone passing by that you are a solo player. Plus, if you will build a basic base with the honeycombs, uh, the players living in this region will rarely raid you. This is because many clans will live in the Arctic and risking raiding a solo isn't worth it while being surrounded by full geared groups. Speaking about the cons, we have Hard to hide when everything is white unless you buy expensive skins from the marketplace. Most powerful clans will live here because of the abundance of sulfur, so often you will die by the hands of IKs. Also, you almost always will be outgunned and outnumbered. So, you won't win many fights and will die a lot. It's rare to find wild animals and when you do, it always will be a dangerous polar bear. Therefore, it will be hard to obtain cloth and leather to craft basic gear sets. Without speaking about the animal fat needed to craft low-grade fuel to build furnaces. In this region, you also won't find any plants. Meaning, you won't be able to obtain cloth from hemp and food from berries and mushrooms. One of the worst thing about this region is the cold, that during the day will slowly drain your health if you go around naked, while during the night it will kill you in less than 2 minutes. The cold will also prevent or slow down your passive healing in a comfortable zone in your house when being fed, making it hard to be full health when leaving your base. For most of the cons there are workarounds, so stick till the end of the video to learn how to deal with them. To start, once you spawn, open your map and look at the white part of it. Here you have to search for a basic monument with a recycler that can be a supermarket, mining outpost or gas station. The best in the Arctic is the supermarket and gas stations, mainly because inside them you can find food and water that will help you to heal up. Your first objective will be to reach this monument and build a base here. If you remember, one of the cons is that you will lose health each second staying in the snow region, so it will be quite hard to reach your destination without speaking about farming for the resources needed to set up a base. So in the map, search for a road connected to the monument you need to reach. One of those roads will go out of the Arctic region. So you have to reach this road at the exact location where the snow region starts and place a sleeping bag here. If you are new to the game, to craft a sleeping bag you need to search for some hemp plants and collect them. Each wild plant of this type will reward you with 10 cloth. Once you have 30 you can craft a sleeping bag from the items tab. This bag will allow you to respawn outside of the snow region if you will die trying to set up your base. The best will be to place it in a closest forest, where you can find some mushrooms to max up your health before going in. Also before heading in, don't forget to collect another 30 cloth for a second sleeping bag. Now follow the road toward the monument. On your way there, you will find several trash piles where you have to destroy the barrels and loot the crates. This will allow you to find some clothes to protect yourself from the cold, weapons to break the barrels faster and tools to speed up your base building process. Without speaking that often you will obtain some tarp, rope and severing kits by breaking the barrels. Once you reach the monument you have to find the recycler and place inside it the tarp that will be converted in 50 cloth. 
The sewing kit, two tent cloth and the two rope, while the rope itself can be converted into 15 cloth. Initially, all of this cloth should be used to make more sleeping bags that you should place along the road and the monument, allowing you to respawn there in case someone will kill you. This is important to save time traveling back to the road, you will farm a lot. Also, it will help you to reach your corpse and check if the killer took your loot or left it behind. After recycling everything, it's time to choose where to build your base and I advise you to do so a little bit away from the monument to decrease the chances of being raided. The best spot will be to head toward the closest hill and find a spot where you can easily farm for some wood and stone. Now it's time to start farming wood and stone to build your first base. Personally, I advise you to start with a temporary one by one where you can store your tools and resources a little bit safer than in some stashes. After building the temporary base, place inside it another sleeping bag and start roaming in search of the best spot to build your mine base. If you need a guide for a good base design, check the base building playlist linked in the description of this video. Anyway, once you find a good building spot, mark it in the map and go back to your one by one. Farm some wood and stone to craft some spare tools in case someone will kill you. Then farm the rest of the resources for your base. Personally, I advise you to deposit the resources in the temporary base, each two stone nodes and three trees. This is because farming makes a lot of noise. The fact that your body makes a good contrast with the snow, anyone will easily spot you even at a large distance. And almost any player with a weapon will kill a farmer to steal his resources. Anyway, once you have enough resources, a good idea will be to visit again the road to farm for some components that can be recycled in order to obtain some metal fragments and you will need 300 of them in order to craft two sheet metal doors. One for the main entrance and the second for the airlock. Also, on the road, occasionally you will find red barrels that contain some low-grade fuel and with 50 of them you will be able to craft the furnace, bypassing the hunting for animal fat. Once you build your main base, you need to learn how to get warm and recover your health. During the day, it will be enough to stay close to a burning furnace or a campfire, but will raise your comfort level to 50. This will allow you to restore your health to a maximum of 80% if you have your hunger over 100 points. Keep in mind that during the night those heat sources won't be enough to heal up and you will need to wear some clothes as well. Next step is to farm more of the rod until you get 50 scraps. This will allow you to build a workbench level 1, from where you need to research the rogue bear skin. Then hunt for a berry in order to obtain the leather needed to craft it. Placing this item on top of the ceiling and standing on top of an item to get close to it or on top of a sleeping bag will allow you to reach 100 points in comfort. This will result in you being able to heal up to the max health. In alternative, you can unlock the chair. It will take some space on the ground, but sitting in it will raise your comfort to 100% without the need of anything else. While to solve the cold problem, you need to unlock the electric heater. To do so, you also will need to unlock a small rechargeable battery and a solar panel that you need as well. Once unlocked and crafted all three of them, start by placing the small rechargeable battery inside the house, while the solar panel on the roof facing the north direction. Now, from the electrical items, you need to craft also the wire tool that will allow you, once equipped, to connect the electrical output of the solar panel with the power in of the battery. Finally, place the electric heater on the wall. Base placement is close to the workbench, so you can craft items while healing up. Finally, connect the power output of the battery with the power in of the heater. As a result, the heater will start glowing and the temperature in the room will rise enough to get rid of the cold completely. The heater has also a pass-through that you can next connect to some ceiling lights to light up your room. 
This will be quite handy to have during the night time. A little note, the barrag and the old electric components can be obtained while farming the road. Also, the tech trash needed for the solar panels can be obtained by recycling CCTV cameras and the targeting computers found mainly inside the monument crates and sometimes even in the one on the road. Personally, I found it more common to directly obtain the solar panels from the road crates compared to the two components mentioned previously. Anyway, once you have your heating system running and a comfortable zone in your house, you'll be able to heal up to the maximum health. This will give you a huge advantage against other solo or even duo players. As a result, now you can finally gear up and try to do some PvP and uh, being able to efficiently defend yourself from other solo players while farming the road and the monument. But don't go too much overboard uh, in crafting equipment, because sooner or later you will be destroyed by a passing by clan member. Also, keep a few best kits you can craft uh, for the night time and research a double barrel shotgun uh, and a flashlight. In fact, this is the best early weapon to which you will be able to attach a flashlight. Once you have it, you can try to camp for some full geared players inside the monument. If you're lucky enough, you can catch a player that came to recycle hoping uh, to be safe under the veil of the night, but thanks to your flashlight on the double barrel, you will be able to steal all of his loot. Farming this basic monument will usually yield between 100 and 300 scrap if you recycle every single component from all the crates. Also, I advise you to always farm a little bit of rod before reaching the monument. This is quite important to obtain the claws from tarp, severing kit and drop that rarely spawn inside the monument crates. Sure, there are always some barrels inside and around the monument, but breaking them there is a bad idea, considering the noise it will generate. In fact, this will put you at a disadvantage against other players that are also trying to loot this place, that will immediately try to sneak up on you. An important note, if your monument is a supermarket or a gas station, in the office of those buildings, you can find a green keycard. While inside the crates occasionally, you also can find an electric fuse you will need in order to use the card. Once you have uh, around 10 of both, search the map for another monument called the Sewer Branch and build a base close to it. Next, transfer your green cards and electric fuses to the new base during the night with a few shotgun kits. At this monument area, you can find a fenced building. Reach it and destroy one of the two wooden barricades. This will allow you to enter inside the building. Behind the central structure in it on the left, you can find a fuse box where you need to place the electric fuse. While on the opposite side, you can find a switch. If it will show a green light, this means that the monument was recently looted and you won't find anything inside. While in case it is red, interact with the switch. Then follow the electric line going out from the building. It will lead you toward a tunnel entrance. But before entering inside, check the cylindrical building nearby where you can find some crates to loot. Now go inside the tunnel and down there you will need to use the flashlight on your shotgun or a torch. At the end of this tunnel you can find a locked door. To open it you need to equip the green keycard and swipe it on the panel on the right side of the door. As a result the door will be opened. Now proceed further and in the next area on the right you can find your first crate behind a barricade. While a little bit further on the left, there is a recycler you can use in order to convert your items to scrap and raw materials. In front of it, there is also a staircase. And before the turn to the right, check on top of the crate piles to the left where you will find the second lootable crate. At the end of the staircase, you can find another crate on the left corner, a blue key card on top of the right table and a second crate on the right from the next staircase. Now keep going up and at the crossroad turn to the left. This will allow you to find a small oil refinery where you can convert some wood and crude oil into low-grade fuel. 
while on the opposite side, near the entrance inside the tunnel, you can loot uh, the next crate. From here, you need to use the tunnel in order to reach the second room, where you can find a few other crates to loot. Once recycled everything, go to the left from the recycler and stay to the left until you reach the exit door. If it is closed, on the side of the door you can find a button to use in order to open it. Repeat this puzzle until you finish the fuse boxes and bring the blue key cards and the low grade fuel back to your arctic base. Also, by running this puzzle you will find several SMG bodies and a lot of high quality metal. Use it in order to craft some Thompson SMGs. To use those weapons you will need some pistol bullets. Craft also some road sign gear sets with a hoodie, boots and pants in order to complete the kit. Once you have at least one kit ready, build another base close to the Arctic Research Base monument. Bring there your new gear sets and blue key cards. In this monument you will find several heavy equipped scientists that you have to defeat. They will drop you a decent amount of ammo and mans to compensate the amount of resources needed to defeat them. Once cleared the area, check inside the buildings for piles of fuel, food, ammo and components that you will be able to loot. Also, you can find several yellow crates containing good items as well. If you are ready to leave, reach the two red main structures. On the frontal side of them you will find a blue panel where you have to swipe a blue key card. Inside both you will find some barrels to break and the crates to loot. While only in one of them you can find in the left corner a red key card and a snowmobile. You can use it in order to escape this area fast and safely. Finally, when you get a few red key cards, you should build a new base close to the military tunnel. Keep in mind that before going inside this monument, you will need all three key card types, a lot of meds and ammo. First, you will need to clear the wall tunnel from the enemies. Then go back to the entrance of the tunnel and at the dead end you can find the entrance inside the armory. Here you can find a few toolboxes and a fuse box where you need to place an electric fuse. To the right from the fuse box you have to use the switch to start the puzzle. You will have a limited time to reach the next switch, this is why it is important to clear the tunnel first. Anyway, use the tunnel until reaching a derailed train. To the left, after the sand barricades, you will be able to find a fence that has a hole you need to use in order to enter inside another tunnel. Then, immediately in front, you have to use a staircase leading toward the storage room. On the left of the door, uh, there is a green swipe panel where you will need to use your green keycard. Behind the door, you can find a scientist to kill, a crate to loot, and to the right, a switch you have to use in order to lock the next puzzle. Now get out and follow the tunnel. Once you reach the exit number 3, check inside the red open it container to the right. Inside it, you will find some military crates to loot. Now keep following the right tunnel until you will reach the laboratory entrance. On the door panel, you will need to use the blue key card and defeat the scientist guarding the entrance. Behind him, there is a door with a timer you have to interact with. This will active the key card panel above. Use your red key card on it to open the door. Behind this door, you can find several scientists to defeat. Then, in the left room, you can find the main loot on top of the shelves. While on the opposite side of this room, you can find the exit door. Press the red button on its left to open it and defeat the scientists in this tunnel. In its middle, to the right, you also can find another door you can open pressing the red button. Behind it, you can find a staircase you need to use in order to reach a mining tunnel, at the end of which you will be out. Now that you are at the end of the video, you learned all you need to know about the Arctic playstyle. But if you like to try another way to play the game, check the video suggested that will appear right now.